Hello. Uh, this is a little bit of a response or a little bit more of an explanation as to the video that I put up yesterday morning um, about my bone marrow donation. Um, now, you may have noticed over the season that in all of the videos that I've done, it, the links in the description are always to do with uh, bone marrow donation and blood donation. Um, now, if, if you're fit and able, I think this season, particularly as Wolves fans, with the news of uh, what happened to Carla Kimi, it really is something that we should be doing more of, I think, and raising more awareness of. Um, <clears throat> so my story goes back to um, January 2016. We could look back even further than that, I think, since since I was about 17 or 18, I've been uh, giving blood. And then I moved to Wales in 2015, August 2015, and... I started a new school in January 2016 and on the first day that I was there they were giving out leaflets to do with blood donations and I explained to the children how important giving blood was and what it could be used for and then it made me think oh well I haven't given blood for a long time or I haven't given blood since moving to Wales so I think I'd, I'd go and do it uh, and a couple of weeks later I found in my local leisure centre there was a blood donation uh, evening and I went there without a uh, without having a specific slot that you sometimes you have to have well, I went and uh, to give blood and at the same time they said would you like to go on the bone marrow register and I said well what what is it and they said that all you have to do is I think it was spit in a little cup or they swabbed the inside of your mouth something like that it was very very or they t I can't even remember what it was they took the a blood sample from me uh, to be tested to basically see if you know to have me on the register as a possible match for somebody in need of a bone marrow transplant and uh, they said at the time you probably will never ever get matched with somebody the chances of being matched are so slim that um, it you know it's incredibly unlikely and I forgot about it to be honest that was in the January I went about working and stuff and uh, in the same school and you know the end of the year uh, we'd <coughs> our school finished slightly earlier than than others that year I remember because a letter came through the post on the Monday I was in the house by myself and it said you were a possible match for somebody in need of a bone marrow transplant uh, could you contact us and come in for another blood test so I did I went uh, that afternoon and went and gave a blood test and then went on holiday and stuff like that in the summer holidays and forgot almost all about it and again because they kept telling me that the chances are so slim that it probably won't happen so then came back from my holiday at the end of uh, the middle of August I think it was I uh, had another phone call saying are you sitting down uh, these various doctors had done various tests on me and the person who was in need of the transplant and it would appear that the best match they had available was me and um, they wanted to, to do, you know, they wanted to go ahead with it. So they went in then to the Welsh Blood uh, Service in Llantrisant and they told me all about the possible ways of doing it and which one I would be happy with doing. I also had a, a medical as well to see if I was fit and healthy enough or if there's anything wrong with me. Excuse me. But that, uh, but that was that was fine. Uh, there was no problems there. So the two methods that they've got of doing uh, the the bone marrow extraction is they can either uh, take a quite a big needle and put it into your the back your back of your hip and extract the cells that they need straight from your hip because that's a really dense muscle uh, bone. Sorry. Or the other way is they give you they come to your house and they inject you with. Uh, this hormone, I think it is, to make your bones make more uh, blood cells, stem cells. And then they, you go to a hospital then overnight and they extract the cells that they need and they give you your clean blood back. And it feels like you've got a bit, a bit of a hangover, but you're generally fine. Uh, you don't lose any blood with that one. You lose around about three pints, I think, with the, the way that they take it out of your back and stuff. But again, the pain of that, I was thinking, is probably <coughs> nothing, is it, in comparison to leukaemia and stuff like that. So, uh, 
Oct uh, I, I, again, back and forth through September and the beginning of October of 2016, giving blood samples and tests, and they would ring me once a week to say, how are you, are you feeling okay? I'd had a cough, so I had to tell them what medicine I was using and stuff like that, but again, <clears throat> that was fine. Then the week of it, uh, the Wednesday evening, I think it was, uh, no, sorry, the Thursday evening, that was the first time they came to the house, and they injected me in the stomach with, oh, this nurse, sorry, they, uh, this nurse came and injected me in the stomach with this uh, hormone, which then you could almost feel straight away the next day I was aching in my skull and in my sternum and in my uh, pelvis because of any of thigh bones because they are really thick dense bones and obviously they were making the most of these stem cells <clears throat> uh, and that happened the Thursday night the Friday night and the Saturday afternoon I think it was and then the Sunday evening uh, I went well, Sunday afternoon I went to the hospital in Newport a uh, private hospital really you know, posh and was well looked after, uh, but they didn't have any Wi-Fi, I remember. And I was fed really well, and they gave me another couple of injections there to to finish off. And then the following morning, uh, it was very, very straightforward. I woke up quite early, they asked me what newspaper I wanted, they gave me a nice breakfast, and then they sat me down on this bed, uh, and they put a needle in this arm where they were taking the blood with the extra stem cells out. Then they would put it into this big, uh, like washing machine type of thing to my right, and it was spinning around and spinning around and extracting what it needed to extract. And then in my right arm, there was another needle that was going in, and that was putting in all of the my clean blood or blood without the extra stem cells in. And I did, you know, beforehand I felt a little bit groggy and a little bit achy, but as soon as those needles went in, and as soon as they started putting the machine on, the pain sort of went, and I just sat there. As the picture showed yesterday, um, for a long time, just sitting there, watching telly, waiting, chatting, and that was it. There was no pain whatsoever. Uh, a couple of benefits of the, the the procedure was that I had a couple of days off work. Um, but yeah, there was no pain at all. I didn't really, really feel that tired afterwards because it was. If I knew I was doing a really good thing. Um, so yeah, I th they had a target as well for how much bone marrow they wanted to, or how many stem cells they wanted to get from me, and they managed to get three times as much. So you know, I don't know what I did that was special, but it, I don't know. I did. <laughs> um, so then, a week or so after, or two weeks after, I had a phone call to just check that I was okay, and of course I was. There was nothing, no side effects or any problems with that, and then. I didn't hear from them again until, uh, or in fact, when I got home a couple of days after, I had a box of chocolates sent by the Welsh Blood Service, so that was, that's another reason why, to, why you need to sign up and do it. And then uh, October this year, I had a phone call to say that the person who had received my bone marrow transplant was still alive and was still recovering well. and. I do, I, I'm not allowed to know any more at this point, so hopefully this October, a few months' time, I'll be able to know a little bit more and possibly be in contact with him even, because there's a gap of two years between the procedure and, and then being able to contact them, and hopefully I'll be able to to meet him and uh, and find out how he's getting on. But I just wanted I, I wanted to make this video for a long, long time. I wanted to tell people about this for a long, long time. But I just haven't really found the right opportunity or the right time to do it. I have mentioned it in videos before um, about the fact that I'd done it, and particularly when the news came out about Carla Kimi, I thought that this platform now would be a good opportunity to to get my message across and to encourage people because it isn't. There's no pain to it at all. If you know, I might not like needles, and it might not be very comfortable for a couple of days. But if you think about the what other people are going through and if you just consider that it could be you or it could be your mother or your father or your or a cousin or whatever it, you know in need of that transplant then you would expect somebody else to do it and it really you know I remember then one of the phone calls I had with the worst blood service afterwards was you need to tell people how straightforward and how painless and how easy it was to do because 
people are scared of him. They hear, you know, do you want to be on the bone marrow register? Mm, don't really fancy a big drill in your back. And that's, a, that's, that's only one of the options. And it is, from what I remember, they would have rather me do the other method with the stem cells and, 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 and that way because they get more cells that way than they do through putting the needle in your back. So hopefully the video that I put up yesterday and, and this video will raise a little bit more awareness of how easy it is and get people signed up to the, there's the Anthony Nolan Register in England, there's the Welsh Blood Service as well in Wales. There'll be, I know there's people in Australia who watch these videos as well, there'll be the equivalent in every country and particular with ethnicity, you know, black and Asian ethnicities, they have massive shortages with those uh, type of uh, people. So they need lots of people to sign up for those registers. And hopefully, you know, there's lots of young people who watch this as well, when you're old enough to go and give blood, when you're 16 or however old you have to be, that you also sign up for the bone marrow register as well then, because the chances are slim, but the more, the more people we can get signed up onto the, the bone marrow register, the better. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've listened to all of that and hopefully you've been inspired or you've, you're just interested in it. But if you've got any questions about, about the procedure or about anything, uh, my email address is in the uh, description of this video and in, in the description of yesterday's video as well. And hopefully, you will have taken something away from, from this. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon.